We'll call to order tonight's Committee of the Whole for the Auburn City Council meeting for May the 16th, 2023. The City Council should have the minutes from the May 2nd Committee of the Whole. Are there any additions or corrections to those minutes? If so, is there a move to approve? So moved. Move. I have a motion is second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? The minutes are approved. Questions on tonight's agenda for the City Manager? Ms. Crouch, anything for us? No, I have nothing. Okay. I did want to let the uh, council know that I have received, uh, I, I interpreted a, a really good and valid um, application for the Historic Preservation Commission. Uh, just received it a couple of days ago. And so I was going to ask uh, the city manager if we could add that, if there's a possibility, if the council would be okay to add that to the next committee of the whole so we, so we could consider that. They're, they're functioning with one less member right now. Remember, it's coming up automatically for the next council meeting it per is. your request at the last okay, meeting. Okay, so it's coming up anyway. Absolutely. Good. So you will get applications that have been received in the regular period um, as you do about a week out from the council meeting. Good. Okay. All right. Anything else for the council? All right. Is there a move to adjourn the committee of the whole? So moved. All right. Second. We are adjourned and we will start the regular meeting right at six o'clock.
We'll call to order tonight's City Council meeting for May the 16th, 2023. We certainly welcome all of you that are with us tonight. We welcome all of those who are listening online and watching online and listening uh, on WANI. Lindsay with the roll call. Adams. Here. Koblenz. Here. Dawson. Here. Griswold. Here. Mormon. Here. Parsons. Here. Taylor. <clears throat> Witten. Here. Anders. Here. Would you please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and then remain standing for a moment of silence. I pledge, I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. Earlier during the Committee of the Whole, we did not have any business, and so we'll go into announcements at this point in time. I want to uh, extend my thoughts and prayers to the family of Dewey Northcutt. Mr. Northcutt was a member of the City Council from 1972 to 1976. Um, he began a long family business in our community um, that is extended to us here today. And, uh, and in fact, Tyler probably wouldn't be with us if Dewey didn't come to Auburn and start in the student housing business a long time ago. But just appreciate Mr. Dewey and everything that he's meant to our community as well as his family. Yesterday at, uh, at Doug Sanford Park, I was uh, asked to be a part of a dedication of a field nine out there for Mr. John Olenek, who for many, many, many years, Becky, over 20 years, he coached our children in baseball without having a child involved in the program. He gave his time and his heart to the kids, even built his own uh, batting cage in his backyard to invite the members of his team to come over and, and participate. And it was a sweet a ceremony yesterday with his family and, and many people who believed in Coach O and thanked him for everything that he's been a part of with our kids. Uh, also last week I was uh, invited to be a part or go go and, and watch and not be a part of the redesignation ceremony over in Columbus where Fort Benning is now called Fort Moore. I appreciate Dave Moore asking, inviting me to be a part of that and what, a, what an impressive um, ceremony that was to think about everything that Hal Moore was for our country and for our community. And just a reminder of what our military does on behalf of all of us to allow us to sit here today and debate the things that we debate as a community. Just the organization and what goes on over at that fort, that installation is just so impressive. But certainly thankful for Dave in, uh, including me in that list. And it was a very, very impressive morning and uh, proud to have Fort Moore named for a former member of our community. I want to remind everybody, a week from Monday is the Mayor's Memorial Day breakfast. And so if you have not gotten your tickets, please contact the city. And uh, uh, Ms. Crouch, I presume we still have a few seats available? Absolutely. Okay, good. I want to congratulate Auburn High's girls soccer team, the girls golf team, and the boys golf team. All three of those teams have finished second in the state. And we're proud of all of them uh, and their efforts and thank them. And I want to thank Auburn High School who have invited me to participate in the Senior Sunrise event tomorrow morning as the senior class of 2023 celebrates their final day on campus. And also thankful that Lee Scott Academy has invited me to be their commencement speaker next week for their graduation. I look forward to being a part of this special moment with our local children who are graduating and moving on. Anybody else from the council have an announcement they'd like to make tonight? Ron, I'd like to thank you about for, for your words about <coughs> Dewey. Um, you know, I can just pick on behalf of the Northcutt family that uh, we're very thankful for all the opportunities that uh, uh, living in Auburn has afforded our family. Uh, it's a very, um, very special place. And, uh, uh, you know, somebody from, from Robertsdale, Alabama, or somebody from Bear Creek, Alabama, or, or somebody from Hoax Bluff, Alabama can come down here and, um, and uh, the opportunities that are afforded to them may not be, be available to them in, in, in lots of other places. They can really make something of themselves with, with a lot of hard work. And I think that's one of the things that makes Auburn a special place. I think one of the things that we, as a council, need to make sure uh, continues. Uh, also, I would like to, uh, pivoting here, I have a uh, meeting next week uh, regarding some traffic issues on, uh, or some traffic improvements, not issues, o on Antelou. Uh, it'll be six o'clock at uh, uh, the library on Tuesday, the 23rd of May. This is for Thank Ward you. 4 residents. Ward 4 residents, yes. Okay, good. All right. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I had the opportunity to be a part of uh, the graduating class of firefighter recruits 
that uh, Phoenix City hosted recently. Three of those recruits are Auburn firefighters. They're uh, three exceptional young men and um, you've got some good employees uh, added to our public safety and it was a terrific ceremony. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Parsons. Anyone else? Okay. Auburn University Communications. Hope you all are all having a good afternoon. Uh, to start my report this week, I'm going to reiterate some of the points that were made in the city breakfast this past week, which was a great time, might I add. Uh, Camp War Eagle kicks off May 24th, ends July 13th. Fall semester kicks off August 16th uh, over at the university, so y'all can still enjoy Auburn traffic free relatively for, <laughs> for the time period. In other news, uh, the AU Club is hosting the first round of the NCAA Regional Men's Golf Tournament. Uh, that started yesterday and will conclude tomorrow, hopefully with the uh, Tigers being sent off to Scottsdale, Arizona to compete in the championship. Um, in other news, two Auburn University athletic trainers, Laura Furman and Noah Tanner, administered life-saving CPR on a pedestrian at the Northwest Arkansas National Airport last Tuesday. Uh, they had just arrived in Fayetteville for the SEC Women's Softball Tournament uh, when they stepped up to the plate. We got you. Uh, okay, okay. Thank you guys. War Eagle, that's all for me. War Eagle. <laughs> We'll move forward with citizens communications on to, items on tonight's agenda. I will uh, inform you that a lot of the items tonight uh, have public hearings attached. So if you'd like to talk about that particular item, we'll ask that you wait until the public hearing is called. But anything else that you'd like to speak to the city council on regarding tonight's agenda, please come forward and give us your name and address. For the record, you have five minutes to speak to the council. Okay, seeing no one, we'll move ahead with city manager's communications. Mayor, I'd like to announce one vacancy on the planning commission. The term will begin August 1st and end July 31st, 2029. Now, the appointment will be made at the July 18th meeting. I'd also like to remind everybody July is a two weeks in a row meeting month. We're meeting on the 11th and the 18th because the Independence Day holiday falls at a time that we cannot meet. So, uh, therefore, unless everybody wants to come and meet on Independence Day, but you moved that meeting a few months ago. So, but other than that, are you ready for the consent agenda? Please. Does any member of the council wish to remove an item and deal with that item individually? Yes. Item 8B, uh, Bravo, please. 8D. B. B is in Bravo. Yeah. 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 B. Yeah. 8B. All right. Anyone else? Okay. We'll start off with 8B. Item 8B authorizes amending and restating the Articles of Incorporation for the Indian Pines Recreation Authority, which will allow it to operate under the provisions of Act 96320 and be named the Indian Pines Recreation Authority. Move for approval. Second. All right, have a motion and a second. Mr. Griswold. Thank you. Um, I just had a question for the finance or the city manager about financing. Uh, will this potential borrowing or sale of bonds, will that go through our city finance department or will this go through a separate entity? No, not at all. The Indian Pines Recreation Authority, I misspoke, will become a public park authority. Uh, they are doing their own financing, which is why well, we have a contribution that we've agreed to over a multi-year period, as the city of Opelika does and Lee County. Um, they're doing a financing to pay for the balance of the golf course improvements that were not funded by uh, purchase of land from the Federal Aviation Administration. So um, instead of getting all of our money up front, they're borrowing money through a bank. But because they are a public authority, even when we borrow money from a bank, bond attorneys call it a bond. Okay. And so, but no, we, we don't backstop this in any way, shape, or form. They're wholly independent. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And another question is the, uh, you said they were financing the, the Delta. How much is the Delta uh, after the both cities, um, Tourism Bureau, Lee County, Red, um, University, everybody in the uh, airport authority or the uh, Indian Pine Authority. How much is how much remains? I do not recall that number off the top of my head. Mary Anders, do you remember? Mr. Knight, Cliff Knight is the chair of the Indian Pines Board. Hey, how are you? Thank you for your good work, Mr. Knight. You're, you're yes. testing my memory. Uh -oh. <laughs> Cliff Knight, uh, 1212 Ferndale Drive, Auburn, Alabama. Uh, I'm going to estimate it to be about 2.7 million, uh, maybe a little less. And, and again, as uh, Ms. Kraut said, uh, this is money promised, so it's not money we're going to have to 
uh, say uh, earn in revenue mm -hmm. it's just uh, promised to us over a five-year period so even the loan is secured by the promise of Auburn City, Opelika City, and, and Lee County. Okay, thank you. Thank also, you. I neglected the Tourism Bureau's in on that also. I they should are. have said Auburn's right. like a tourism. And, and I think we've already received their funds. Yeah. Good. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Could I ask, Could before, you, before you go, um, are you able to meet your obligations on this project? Uh, as in the construction? Mm -hmm. uh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, based on... The promise of uh, uh, money uh, from these entities and uh, based on the fact that we're running on schedule, construction, and budget presently, uh, everything seems to be fine. Now, uh, the original uh, requests were was six million eight hundred thousand. Uh, there was an overrun in the construction bid. Uh, no one's surprised about that, are we? <laughs> uh, but uh, according to those who build golf courses, our 10% overrun of uh, 770,000 was much less than what they had been seeing throughout the country on other projects and everything. Fortunately, uh, uh, Indian Pines had a uh, asset of about 1.5 million, 1.4 million at the time, so we absorbed some of that. Uh, but that money was also planned to cover our, some of our ongoing expenses. But right now, we're, we're, it's going to be tight. I will just say that. I wrote a letter to the mayors coming down to the end. But uh, we, we feel like we're going to cross the line uh, in the black. Yeah. That's the plan anyway. Yeah. I have a question unrelated to the item. But those who golf there since the course is closed, do you have any relationship with other courses to help offset fees and uh, no, no. It, you know, Auburn is sort of unique in the sense that uh, there's two public courses, basically, mm -hmm. maybe uh, maybe a third, some would say, the Greens. Uh, but uh, the the uh, Trent, jo uh, Trent Jones course, obviously, is, is that. And the Indian Pines, we're the only two public courses, really. Mm -hmm. So you'd have to drive to Stillwater, Phoenix City, Montgomery. To, to play on a public course. Everything else is private. And so our, our professionals have been taking some of our, say, <coughs> members out of town to play on courses, but it's limited. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Cliff, when's it expected? Opening, grand opening. Uh, the, the, the date is right now uh, November 1, somewhere around November. Uh, we, we start to, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a dirt pile out there now if you drive by. <laughs> Uh, but we're going to start putting down some uh, some grass and sod June one, so uh, hopefully we'll start seeing some some greenery. Cliff, we really appreciate it, man. As a yeah. as a professional in the ministry uh, world, you have yeah. volunteered to be a part of your uh, community. That's in not such what a great the Baptist way. preacher thought he would ever do. <laughs> is the golf course, I'll, I'll tell you. So it's been a it's been a learning curve, but uh, I'm honored to serve the city. I will just. Take a quick moment. The staff, the mayor, everybody has been great to work with. We have a great city, great city government. I couldn't be more proud to be a citizen here. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Cliff. You. Yep, we appreciate it. Okay, any other comments or questions? All right, we have a motion and a second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Do I have a motion to approve the balance of the consent agenda? So moved. Exactly. All right, I have a motion and a second. Any further questions on the consent agenda? All right, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? And the consent agenda is approved. Under ordinances this evening, item 9A authorizes the back to school sales tax holiday to exempt certain items from city sales tax on Friday, July 21st through Sunday, July 23rd. Unanimous consent is necessary. I'll introduce the ordinance and ask for unanimous consent. Second. I have a motion to second. Does anyone on the council have a problem moving forward with the vote on this this evening? Any questions? All right, Lindsay with the roll call. Adams? Yes. Oblitz? Yes. Dawson? Yes, ma'am. Griswold? Yes, ma'am. Foreman? Yes, ma'am. Parsons? Yes. Witten? Yes. Yes. Item 9B1 is a request from Beehive Park LLC to annex approximately 18.90 acres located on the north side of Lee Road 10, also known as Beehive Road, and east of Biltmore Lane. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval of this request at its April 13th meeting. Unanimous consent is necessary. I'll introduce the ordinance and ask for unanimous consent. Second. A motion to second. Does anyone on the council have a problem moving forward with the vote on this this evening? All right. 
Seeing none, any qu comments or questions? Yes, sir, Mr. Griswold. Thank you. Uh, under the uh, notes from the Planning Commission annexation request, so Greenway and Green Space Impact and Bike Plan Facilities, it says that there a bike path is proposed. Can you update us on the status of the bike path? That is merely copying over from the Greenways and Green Space Plan and a combination of a bike plan and proposed is just that. It is proposed by those plans and not in any other way, shape, or form, um, which means that Beehive Road is ripe for a bike lane at such point um, that one is able to be installed. And one of the things that we will be working on as a staff is you need to be careful about um, people's confusion with bike path and bike lane. Lane is on road and path is off road. It's very rare that we do paths. You see some along both Wire Road and, and Martin Luther King Drive, but th those are rare. Um, this would be a bike path scenario. We don't own Beehive Road right now. It's a Lee County Road. We're currently working with the county. We may take some ownership of it over time after a, a full depth reclam reclamation is done, and that means we gotta dig it up and fix things. And so when there's an opportunity that we can add four feet um, to each side and stripe a bike lane, we do that. And so that is merely a, a staff comment that is very common in all staff reports as was asked four years ago, and it's signaling to the plan. But mm -hmm. based on some questions some of you have had this week, we're gonna get a little bit clearer about what that means. And when it says Greenway and Green Space Master Plan, is that an actively an active plan? As a plan, it's a 2011 plan. It's on auburnalabama.org slash maps. Um, and on there, why we speak to that, there'll be a staff comment, and you saw this with a recent development off of Ogletree Road where we were asking for dedication of Greenway. Mm -hmm. And a staff comment comes directly when property is coming into the city or developing in a certain way based on our rules and regulations, we do acquire easements at the, that time. Very rarely is somebody asked to build it. Um, sometimes they do build if it's connecting to something else, but that's pretty rare. So when we annex something, should we assume that there is an easement that allows for a proposed bike path in the future as part of the No, no, there's annexation. no bike path. The bike lane would just be on Beehive Road, and it, it, it's not needed for right-of-way or anything else. No staff member is suggesting that. This comment is independent of a requirement. It's just stating what a plan says. Okay, That's so, it. A bike, so there's not a bike path proposed, but there is a bike lane. Yeah, it, yeah, the term bike path is used, and there's also a term called bike facility used, which yeah, is kind of all-encompassing, all, all yeah. all but this would only be a bike lane. Okay. And right now it ties to nowhere. So therefore it would be a while before we would build it. There is no bike lane for it to attach to. If you were to build this here, it would be in space. There's not one down Wire Road. There's not one at, at the interstate. Um, and there's not one all the way to South College as this crosses over the interstate. So you don't, if we were to do a section, we would make it connect to some other bike lane. Okay, thank you. Um, yes. This this comment could be made anywhere, but as long as we're talking about Beehive Road, I understand that uh, our engineers are talking to the county engineers and we have great hopes and it, it, it looks like an easy call that we're gonna expand this road, Beehive Road, and one day, No, God no, willing. we don't have plans to expand it at all. The plan is to, to correct it. It's a little bit bumpy out there if you've been out there in this vicinity. Right. Well, it's gonna carry a lot of traffic. It's gonna carry a lot more as time goes on here. I, I, um, I would like to see that, obviously, and, and if we're going to do it, I'd sure like to see a bike lane or something uh, as a matter of safety. Yeah, again, we'd gladly, it's one of those things, though, where it comes in when it connects to something, and right now, one of our challenges is if we just put a bike lane on Beehive Road that starts at, at Wire Road and ends at, at South College, it's not connecting to any other bike facility, so part of that decision point comes for it to connect to something else. So you have a loop or, or different paths. Um, theoretically, though, Sand Hill Road that continues on the other side of college would have the same thing, so that would be the time that you would make a greater outer loop style connection, and that's all in the bike plan. Any other further questions? Okay. We've got a motion second. Lindsay with a roll call. Yes, ma'am. Dawson? Yes, ma'am. Griswold? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Parsons? Yes. Bitten? Yes. Adams? Yes. Yes. 
Item 9B2 is a request from the Industrial Development Board of the City of Auburn to annex approximately 78.3 acres of property located at 2477 Lee Road 10, also known as Beehive Road. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval at its April 13th meeting. Unanimous consent is necessary. I'll introduce ordinance and ask unanimous consent. Second. I have a motion and second. Does anyone on the council have a problem moving forward with a vote on this this evening? Seeing and hearing none of any comments or questions. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Please. Uh, when it talks about uh, water service and says we do not, the city of Auburn does not provide sanitary sewer service to this area. Are we to assume this uh, industrial complex, whatever happens to go there, will be solely on septic? No, that's not, not accurate. There will be the ability to connect a lateral through to sanitary sewer. It's just not currently available to the property. All right, good. Thank you. Any other questions? Mr. Yes, sir. Mayor. Just one uh, comment. I understand that our city staff and the Industrial Development Board uh, in the persons of Dave Bedietz, if I said that right, Debates. and uh, Philip Dunlap have gone out um, and addressed concerns that the property owners in this area have, and I just wanted to thank them for doing that, for going the extra mile to determine what we could do as a city to help everybody um, accommodate uh, progress. Good. Thank you. Anyone else? Okay. Lindsay with the roll call. Dawson? Yes, ma'am. Griswold? Yes, ma'am. Mormon? Yes, ma'am. Parsons? Yes. Yes. Adams? Yes. Oblant? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Item 9B3 is a request from the Industrial Development Board of the City of Auburn to annex approximately 13.14 acres of property located at 2225 Lee Road 10, also known as Beehive Road. Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval at its April 13th meeting. Unanimous consent is necessary. I'll introduce ordinance and ask unanimous consent. Second. I have a motion and second. Does anyone on the council have a problem moving forward to the vote on this this evening? Okay, so any questions or comments? All right, Lindsay with the roll call. Griswold? Yes, ma'am. Foreman? Yes, ma'am. Parsons? Yes. Witten? Yes. Adams? Yes. Oblant? Yes, ma'am. Dawson? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Item 9C1 is a request from Alabama Power Company to rezone approximately 3.92 acres of property located at 1515 Pumphrey Avenue from Comprehensive Development District to Industrial. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval at its April 13th meeting. Unanimous consent is necessary and a public hearing is required. I'll introduce the ordinance and ask for unanimous consent. Second. I have a motion. Second. Seeing one on the council have a problem moving forward with the vote on this this evening. Seeing and hearing none, well, I'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the council, please come forward and give your, your name and address for the record, and you have five minutes to speak. Okay. Seeing no one, we will close the public hearing. Any comments or questions from the council? Okay. Lindsay? Mormon? Yes, ma'am. Parsons? Yes. Mitten? Yes. Adams? Yes. Oblant? Yes. Dawson? Yes, ma'am. Griswold? Yes, ma'am. Anders? Yes. Item 9C2 is a request from Beehive Park LLC to rezone approximately 18.90 acres of property located on the north side of Lee Road 10, also known as Beehive Road, and east of Biltmore Lane from rural to industrial. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval at its April 13th meeting. Unanimous consent is necessary and a public hearing is required. I'll introduce the ordinance and ask unanimous consent. Second. I have a motion and second. Does anyone on the council have a problem moving forward with the vote on this this evening? Okay. At this time, I'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the council, please come forward and give us your name and address for the record, and you will have five minutes to speak. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. Any comments or questions from the council? Okay. Lindsay? Parsons? Yes. Witten? Yes. Adams? Yes. Koblenz? Yes, ma'am. Dawson? Yes, ma'am. Griswold? Yes, ma'am. Foreman? Yes, ma'am. Anders? Yes. Item 9C3 is a request from David Slocum on behalf of Dilworth Development Incorporated to amend the Farmville Lakes Plan Development District to modify Phase 6 by reducing the approved amount of commercial space from 60,000 square feet to 20,000 square feet and adding 60 additional multifamily units. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended denial of this request at its April 13th meeting. Unanimous consent is necessary and a public hearing is required. I introduce the ordinance and ask for unanimous consent. Second. I have a motion and second. Does anyone on the council have a problem moving forward with the vote on this this evening? 
Okay, so you know, we'll open the public here. If you'd like to address city council, please come forward and give your name and address for the record, and you have five minutes to speak. My name is Harold Watson, uh, 2549 Farmville Lakes Drive, Auburn, Alabama. Mayor Anders, Madam Pro Tem, Councilman. First of all, let me say thank you for what you do for the city of Auburn. Uh, we just moved here two years ago, and we love it, and, and we really appreciate all you do, especially Bucky's. We lived in Texas for 20 years, <laughs> and uh, I know what Bucky's can do for a, a community. So my wife said, Harold, what's your time? Okay, don't get carried away with talking too much, so I'll be, be brief. I'm here to speak in opposition to building the uh, apartments in the uh, multifamily unit apartments in Farmville Lakes. My wife and I uh, started our journey 55 years ago. We lived in Mary Street Apartments. And so three years ago, we decided to downsize our house in Pelham, Alabama. And we have done here at Auburn so much. <coughs> we have season tickets to everything down here. And we want to come down here and live. And I will tell you that we've lived in uh, throughout Texas and Louisiana and everywhere. And I would tell you, I'm just not blowing smoke, but you've got a great city and we are proud to be a part of it. And we love our neighborhood, but we have a little bit of a hiccup going on here. So let me kind of just give you some facts here. Uh, when we chose to build in Farmville Lakes areas because of master plan, and I'm not here to bash any developer, whomever, but we were, we were told these certain things would happen, you know. We would have uh, townhomes and houses, and we'd have a retail area. We'd have a clubhouse, a pool, uh, a swimming pool, a private lake, and a pier, fishing pier. Well, as we all know, there were some things that happened along the way, and some things didn't really work out, you know. And the first thing we knew, we saw these apartments, and we thought it was going to be retail and we started inquiring we said wow what happened there you know and then we said wait a minute they wanted to build some more and we said wait a minute that ain't right you know that ain't right and not just personally but really it's these are the issues this one would bring your attention to the the as we all know there's a, a road that's recently been built between our city of ashton lakes and then our community of uh, farmville lakes kind of good and bad. It's good for the residents of, of Ashton Lakes, but that thoroughfare of Farmville Lakes Drive is really a traffic hazard waiting to happen, you know. And we have children in our neighborhood who, who unfortunately sometimes play in, in the road out there. And in our neighborhood, we have no speed bumps like the Ashton uh, Citizen South. Hope we can get that done, thank you, Harold. We do have one uh, speeding z uh, sign for 25 miles. We uh, understand that. <coughs> So, you know, we hopefully we can reduce the traffic, but I will tell you, as we get more citizens kind of living in there, it's going to get worse and worse. And you travel the Farmville Road. You, you know about that road out there, and you know about the intersection of, of 280 and Farmville uh, Road as well. So it's going to be really bad, you know, and we don't need to have more, more apartments for people to live out there. We're not anti-growth. I love growth and I love the area, you know. But we just really want to make sure that it's a safe neighborhood for our, for our residents to walk in the area, to walk dogs, walk their children, you know, and to run, do whatever they want to do. And more importantly, to have a good neighborhood to live in. So uh, in summary, let me just say that uh, we're really looking forward to being part of this community and helping out any way that we can. And uh, Mayor is uh, in closing as one of our great friends of Auburn, what used to say, in closing, the great Jim Fife would say, my time is up, thank you for yours. God bless. <laughs> thank you. Glad to have you in town. Anyone else? Okay, we'll close the public hearing. Any comments or questions from the council? I would like to state, since this is in Ward 3, that um, I've had several residents of the area um, and have the same sentiment as Mr. Watson and oppose the change in the PDD. Um, since this was introduced back in 18, and there was lots of conversations, Mr. Watson wasn't around when um, we got to hear a lot of consternation about connecting from Ashton Lakes to Farmville. So um, I find it curious that now it's on the other side um, about connectivity. However, 
that commercial corner should be preserved, needs to be preserved, because that was one of the um, shining elements of the proposed development in 18, that there would be potentially um, some services that the neighborhood could take advantage of, and it being right on 280, um, I don't know that we need to add more living density right on that corner, but I do think we should preserve it for commercial, and I don't believe that we should amend the PDD any further. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Whitney. Anybody else on the council? Yes, sir. Mr. Mr. Moore. Mayor, uh, just a couple of questions. Um, what we're looking at tonight, the, the PDD covers uh, <laughs> 6A and 6B uh, on our last map, I believe. Is that correct? Phase 6A and Phase 6B, which is the next to the last map in our packets. Yeah, the next to last map. Yeah. Okay. If that is the case, um, is 6A already built, fully built? Hold on a second. Your microphone's off. Hold on. There you go. There we go. Um, so, yes, 6A is already built. Um, if you go out there now, there are actually two mm -hmm. multifamily buildings out there currently. Mm -hmm. So, really, the area of change specific to this request is kind of that 6B area. Um, as mentioned, you know, initially that was slated for 60,000 square feet of commercial space, but this request would kind of, you know, split that off into the 25,000 square feet with some additional multifamily and just in that 6B space as well. And as part of this request, there are no other requested changes to other phases or anything of the, uh, of the PDD as you see it. So 6A and 6B are both in the area in which we're, that is subject to the PDD amendment. 100% of this is subject to the, well, to, to the PDD amendment, no, but just really it's the really PDD, more it's all through the PDD. So, so yeah. all of this is covered by the PDD yeah, itself. Right. However, the really the area of change with this request is going to essentially be confined to that kind of 6B area. Right. Since the 6A area has already been essentially close to build out or very close to build out with the multifamily. But my point is it's in the PDD and it's built and it's built without any commercial. Um, 6A, A, yes, is correct. currently built with just multifamily. That's correct. correct. And, and then the 6B portion has not been developed as of this time. Okay. Uh, contrary to the PDD. No. 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 Why is that? It, well, it's slight, the PDD has it. Because um, you could put 60% in 6B, theoretically. Is that right? Well, 6B is, is slated to be commercial development for retail or services. And so right now, that's what it's slated for. It hasn't been built because they're, they're wanting to do additional multi-unit development, which is what they're asking for, which is why they haven't developed anything in 6B yet. But phase one, phase five, phase two, most of phase three, all of that is, is almost fully built out but they're wanting to add additional <coughs> density by more multi-unit family as opposed to commercial. I understand, but um, I think reasonable people like Mr. Watson and, and myself would think that uh, 6A was going to be commercial as well. Was well, 6A supposed to be part. commercial, Ms. Crouch? Or no, Mr. it's Howard? very complicated because as phases start with these things, things change. Mm -hmm. And so a larger area could have gone anywhere in there per the plan, correct? That's correct. So what was known as phase six could have gone anywhere in there. So correct. I, if I understand what you're getting at is no commercial has been built to date, but there was nothing specific to what we now call 6A is hmm. having to do that. Okay. Um, there correct. is some flexibility, and, and Councilman Mormon, you're correct, too, that there are a lot of PDDs are of a binding nature, mm -hmm. and one of the things you have a different agenda item later, the city is bound, as the developer is, to certain densities, square footages, and, and uses in, in an area. Um, the city actually doesn't have the right to change anything about a PDD unless the applicant requests that we do so. So you're not bound one way or the other to agree to a change. That's that's up to you. Just for clarification on that point mm -hmm. again, so the 60,000 retail was this, spread over all of six was part of the PDD and it's never been reduced to this point. It remains Correct. at 60,000. It's just going to be located yes. on that corner parcel. 
Originally, it was stated in 2018 in a meeting with residents that the commercial would be on the ground floor and the, right. the right. dwelling units would be above it and so that it would be much more um, balanced as you <clears throat> went through the whole phase of six. And that shifted and all the multi-unit family went into its own buildings separate from commercial. So as long as it was in that geographic area, there isn't anything binding in the PDD where the staff could say, unless it was some form of condition of approval that it be done that way, there, it's, as long as it's in that geographic area, it, it complies. This may not, I, I, I may be chasing a rabbit here, but this, uh, this 60,000 square feet, it, it can only go in 6B now. So, Theoretically, yes. Uh, yeah, essentially, yes, unless it, they it, want to start demolishing stuff that they just completed. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah, so, so that's kind of the only portion of this property that's left undeveloped. Are they required to do and required uh, to do at least yeah, sixty thousand? Or it, I guess my, my, the, the, where the question is leading to is: Can you fit fit sixty thousand square feet there on on, on on one floor? Would you have to go vertical? Like, like what's the? Well, how it's set up now is currently they could do kind of a number of things, as as you mentioned, they could certainly do multi-level i don't necessarily envision that here yeah. on this site obviously it's a little bit lower density um and typically with commercial you know a little bit further out like this you're not necessarily a downtown setting if you get some sort of commercial it's probably going to be single story if it's a second story yeah. it's probably going to be pretty limited or something non-retail in nature um, so essentially that sixty thousand is kind of the total square footage that they can build there gotcha but I don't believe they're fully compelled to build mm -hmm. 60,000 gotcha. square feet as long as it's commercial. It just has in to be commercial. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's just like some developments are approved for a greater density. So you'll see at times that often in times there's people will end up in a phase and, and you might be shocked, but they do less density and they're not compelled to build up to the density. They just can't build more than without coming back to you. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments? <clears throat> okay. Lindsay, with the roll call? No. Adams? No. No, ma'am. Dawson? No, ma'am. Griswold? No, ma'am. Norman? No, ma'am. Parsons? No. Anders? No. Item 9C4 is a request from the Industrial Development Board of the City of Auburn to rezone approximately 78.30 acres of property located at 2477 Lee Road 10, also known as Beehive Road, from rural to industrial. Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval at its April 13th meeting. Unanimous consent is necessary and a public hearing is required. I'll induce ordinance and ask unanimous consent. Second. I have a motion to second. Does anyone on the council have a problem moving forward with a vote on this this evening? Seeing hearing none, we'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address City Council, please come forward and give your name and address for the record, and you have five minutes to speak. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. Any comments or questions from the Council? Okay, Lindsay with a roll call. Adams? Yes. Oblance? Yes, ma'am. Dawson? Yes, ma'am. Griswold? Yes, ma'am. Foreman? <coughs> yes, ma'am. Parsons? Yes. Bitten? Yes. Anders? Yes. Item 9C5 is a request from the Foresight Group on behalf of April and John McDonald to amend the Madison Park Plan Development District to remove approximately 1.69 acres from the district. The Planning Commission failed to recommend approval of this request by a vote of 3 to 3 at its April 13th meeting. Unanimous consent is necessary and a public hearing is required. I'll introduce the ordinance and ask unanimous consent. Second. Second. A motion is second. Seeing one of the council have a problem moving forward with the vote on this this evening. Seeing and hearing none, at this time I'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address City Council, please come forward and give us your name and address for the record, and you have five minutes to speak. Uh, Brett Basquin with the Foresight Group, <clears throat> representing the applicant. Um, this particular project was before Planning Commission. We only had six members attend, and the vote was split 3-3. Three, three. Um, you know, usually in baseball, tie goes to the runner, but in this particular case, the, the motion fails. Um, originally, this PDD was, originally when it came in, was 50 acres. Uh, majority of this PDD was uh, multifamily uh, many moons ago. Um, the PDD was revised back in the Great Recession in 2012 um, when this property was in foreclosure. Uh, on your screen, you'll see an outline in, in green 
that dotted outline in green is the current PDD that's plus or minus 13 to 15 acres. Uh, depends on, on what information you're looking at. Um, um, we are the only undeveloped parcel left in this current PDD. If you look up there right now from north to south, you have open space, you have multi-unit, then we have a Dollar General, then we have Gray's Auto. The only piece that's vacant laying in this PDD is our parcel. Our parcel is actually split zone. Three quarters of our parcel is in the PDD, about a quarter of it is outside of the PDD. We are also separated from the rest of this PDD by Haley Lane. That road that's, that's, that runs through there kind of bifurcates us from the rest of the PDD um, uh, anyways. Um, our parcel's odd shaped. Um, it's kind of like a, an L. We have a little bit of a stem with, with a little, little bit of frontage on Wire Road, but then we wrap behind another parcel that uh, fronts uh, on Wire Road. Um, when we were talking to staff on this, um, you know, the question was, uh, do you expand the PDD to encompass the quarter of our site and add it to the PDD, or do we just remove this parcel uh, from the PDD? And in conversations, um, it, it was kind of a, you go one way or, or go from the other. We moved in the direction because the rest of the PDD is built um, to, uh, to be removed uh, from the PDD. Later on your agenda tonight, if the PDD, uh, if, if, if we're approved as a conditional use for a uh, multifamily use uh, on this property. Um, if you go to the next slide. One of the questions that came up um, was uh, was talking about the you know they wanted to preserve this land for commercial um, along the wire road um, corridor there um, you know we have a, a good bit of, of college owned uh, property um, with the vet clinic through there um, as you've seen in Auburn for the most part most of our commercial developments nodal it's at the major intersections we have limited development in between our major intersections other than maybe South College. Um, as you can see at East University in Shug, we got a commercial node with a gas station and Hardee's, Big Mike's and Sheila C's. Um, you keep coming on wire and you get to Webster after you pass the, the vet school and we have a commercial node there with some strip centers and gas stations. Uh, in between uh, there, um, there's, there's a little bit of commercial, especially at, uh, at this intersection which doesn't go anywhere. Um, but then the recently approved PDDs at Cox and Wire have uh, commercial at those corners. Um, in the foreseeable future, the commercial that's gonna be driven along this corridor is gonna be on the Cox and Wire intersection. Um, you know, it, it's with the density and the, and the housing type that's going in there, um, I, I just don't see how this, removing this two acres and, and letting it be uh, multi-unit uh, 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 will affect the commercial viability of that corridor. You know, uh, those PDDs uh, have a good amount of, uh, of commercial square footage that's got to get absorbed, and people, that's where the commercial is going to go before it goes in between um, the, the major intersections. So we don't feel like this is really affecting the commercial viability um, of this corridor. But, um, that's all. I'll be happy to answer any questions, but just wanted to kind of review our thoughts with you guys and um, go over our, our, our thinking on um, this particular site. Thank, Thank you. you. Yes, sir. Uh, can we ask questions? You want to do that now? You want to do all right. Mr. Basquiat, can you please return? Yeah, we have a question. For do you want to finish the public hearing first and then we're in the public hearing that might well, be I was best. going to let him just while he was standing here. I didn't know who else that might have a question, but if that's what we need to do. That would be best if you completed okay, the we'll public hearing. Okay, we'll call him back hearing. in a minute. Anyone else like to speak? Yes, sir. Good evening. I'm Michael Musselwhite, uh, 1318 Kurt Circle. Uh, Brett, Brett uh, was telling you about the uh, PDD. Originally, Madison Square, uh, Madison Park, was just student condos, 
and just it, and it's later on you'll hear about multifamily, but I don't want y'all thinking it's multifamily cheap for students. This is going to be freestanding houses, uh, like the ones that Botanic built. If y'all familiar, if you've been over to Opelika Botanic, when you drive in, there's a house to the right. I've got a picture up if you want to see it, <clears throat> but uh, it's like two story, really nice. So these are going to be half million dollar plus houses. Um, the, the theory is, the theme is kind of going towards the game day market. With the new Bucky's that's coming in, it's so popular. We think everybody's going to come into Bucky's, uh, make their pit stop there, uh, good for tax revenue, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, come straight up Cox Road, and then you can actually catch Tiger Transit. So they don't, if they want to tailgate, grill out, whatever, they can have their house there, uh, not have to drive, not have to drink and drive catch Tiger Transit, go straight into the game day, walk downtown, you know, go to the restaurants and Jane and bookstore and all that kind of stuff. And, uh, you know, and then ride home with a safe ride home. So that's kind of the theory of what we're doing for this location. But they're gonna be upper, you know, high end freestanding houses, not some kind of monstrosity of uh, apartment complex or something. Okay. Thank you, Michael. Anyone else? Okay, we're gonna close the public hearing. Mr. Warren, would you like to ask your question now? Mr. Fasker, would you please come forward? I'll, I'll probably need a lot of help. It's kind of a technical question, but why do we not amend the PDD? Why do we want to drop the PDD and then do something under the underlay, under the CDD? Um, we had that conversation with staff at the time mm -hmm. when, when this was going on. Uh, we, we both kind of agreed that we thought the least path of resistance was a move, removing the, the PDD from this parcel. It was kind of a, you could go one way or the other. Um, so that's the way we, what we did. Um, if, if there was vacant land still in the PDD, we probably would have went another way. But since this was the only thing left, there's really nothing binding you know what I mean? M much of anything to um, to uh, to preserve, for lack of a better term, uh, just because everything else was developed within the PDD. Okay. okay. Any other comments or questions from anybody on the council? Yes, uh, Mr. Yes. Criswell. Uh, is it possible to provide some input as to what the planning commission found objectionable to this? What three members of Gladly. I also want to clarify there um, is some confusion. I, I want to clarify that when the PDD was done, the, the parcel in question was a, a parcel in and of itself. There wasn't a PDD overlay splitting a parcel. That's very and highly unusual, so I don't want to create confusion for you of how did it end up this way. Unless Mr. Basquin corrects me, additional property was acquired. Yeah, we don't, I don't want any confusion that somehow we laid a PDD over and left, left some acreage out. That doesn't typically happen. So over time, people acquire property from others. That, that happens. And to speak to the staff recommendations, when applicants come to us, it's our job to, to figure out a way to help them accommodate what they're asking to do. But it certainly doesn't mean that we're endorsing what, what they want to do. It simply means they need the the best solution to what they're attempting to do to bring before different different bodies for approvals. And so in suggesting that, the staff is suggesting the cleanest way, as Mr. Basquin indicated, would be to do this from a regulatory standpoint. It is the neatest and cleanest way to do that if it's going to be done. So what was the staff recommendation on this? Mr. Howard. Staff recommendation for denial and also the future conditional use you'll see on a portion of this property was also for denial. You want to explain why? Yes. Um, so I think as some of the discussion has gone tonight um, and, and the applicant had mentioned, you know, obviously this is on a um, heavily traveled <coughs> four lane highway, five lane highway, really. Um, it's certainly designated this area as commercial already. Um, the future land use map kind of ties back to the initial PDD. So that's something we certainly look at. We look at areas surrounding it. Future land use map um, surrounding it is also kind of a mixed use. Um, you know, I don't necessarily have heartburn with residential kind of further back in the property kind of as part of that original PDD um, that was discussed but you know from from our standpoint and the documents that we have and our guiding documents that ultimately goes back to 
this is a, a you know going to be a commercial corridor. It may not be the uh, you know most busy one in town or anything like that. But ultimately, you know, commercial uses are more appropriate for properties and parcels fronting that corridor than um, than residential. And, and that was the planning commission's um, objections as well. Yes, I think obviously it, there was a split vote, but um, those who voted um, against the the motion had very similar sentiments to, to the All staff right. as well. Thank you. So the request before us is to remove 1.69 acres. The rest of the PDD is already built out. That is correct. And so that 1.69, if we were to remove it as from the PDD, the base zone of that is CDD. Correct. correct. So we would operate as CDD and in CDD with 1.69 acres, they could build houses. Yes. <clears throat> Yes. Um, ultimately, it would, you know, they would have to lay it out on the site, and there'd be some things to that man of that manner. But you know, certainly, single family is is on CDD as well as a number of other uses. Once once it's removed from the PDD, there also would not be. I'm not saying they they would do this, but they're also not compelled to build anything a conditional use would be considered for. Mm -hmm. Once you remove the PDD, it it reverts back to its base zone, mm -hmm. and if nobody ever develops anything, then it just reverts back to its base zone. There is no hook on that. There is a hook in other ways when you rezone property, but this would be removal and the base zoning is already there. So, so the no staff is pointing out in, in the memo. So there's nothing that says that we couldn't approve the removal of the 1.69 from the PDD and it just says CDD, which is in keeping with the area that we would have to approve the conditional <coughs> use later. You, well, you wouldn't have to. Right. And that's things, anything CDD can go there regardless of what you prove if, if you remove the PDD, Thank anything you. that's allowed in that zone. Con conditionally would come before you and permitted by right would not come before you. Yeah. Well, the, al <clears throat> the alternative is to add this additional acreage to the PDD, or an alternative could be add this acreage to the PDD and amend the PDD to include multifamily, or is that a possibility at all? It is the staff would give the same recommendation of denial. So again, okay. for the applicant and what Mr. Bascom's point, this was this was a concerted effort by everybody to say this is it's the same thing either way. This was the decision point. It doesn't really change the staff recommendation. Ultimately, it's up to you guys. Okay. I had a, a curiosity question. How many houses, uh, Mr. Musselwhite, still here? How many houses do you think you would want to build on that? Maximum sixteen. And we have. A 16, did you say? It's in the packet. Uh, the site plan with the houses, so there's a maximum 16 houses. Um, 1.69? No, no. no. Mr. Uh, Bigger acreage. See, the PDD yep. only covers part of the property. That's our dilemma. Right. It's 2.4 um, total. Hmm. It's a great layout. Right in the middle. It's item 10A5 if you're looking for it in your okay. agenda. Thanks. It's a very clean, efficient layout. And, um, the, other, the other thing I'll mention real quick is, you know, when we talk to engineers, Hold on, Mr. Musselwhite. Tell me when it's appropriate time. <laughs> Thank you. I was looking at something, wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Ms. Crouch, we, they're talking about houses and the conditional uses for multiple unit development. Can you help me square that up? That's a lot situation, um, meaning. Okay. In Auburn, as we define fee simple lots, it's when, when you own the dirt underneath your property. Sometimes we call them condo plats and many other things, and attorneys will call them land condos. It's very confusing, but that is, they're not fee simple lots. That's why he's got to call it a multi unit development. To have fee simple lots, they all have to abut a public right of way and meet certain lot parameters. You can get closer together and so on. And um, some of the PUD changes that we're looking to make in the current study were, were under is some of those things in the future you might be able to agree to them to them being fee simple lots if it's if it's something we think is a win-win so um, right now they're caught in a regulatory side so it's called multi-unit development but definitely not intended to be apartments there's no no um there's no thought to adding a pdd later of a different kind to this property and to explain what would be done and uh, because I think, I think our reservation here is it's it's the big unknown we don't know where this is going 
So the problem is, and one of the reasons we're doing the planned unit development regulations is you need 10 acres minimum to have a planned development district, so they're completely stuck. They can't go into their own planned development district because we don't allow that <laughs> by acreage. So that's where they either have to exit this one or modify this one in some way to be incorporated. And again, um, the staff would recommend denial for the same reasons, and it's based, as, as Mr. Howard said, based on our long-range plans and how we view this corridor. So certainly up to the council what they, they wish to do. So if we had plan unit development regulations, would there be a plausible development that they could put on the 2.4 acres? Or would we still recommend denial because it's right there on It depends on, on what the design, there would be a lot more design we would see and a lot more back and forth about things. A planning and development, you would have renderings, you would have other things. Um, and you might be, they might be asking for waiver to setbacks and other things like that. What we haven't decided yet as part of that process is, is there a minimum acreage? Because we're talking about that in urban and suburban areas. Those things haven't been determined, but our goal was to facilitate good development in Auburn. That's our goal. And so ultimately in collaboration with developers, this gives us a chance for give and take on both sides to get the best product out there. And so, but unfortunately they don't have that option right now. We're months away from them having that option. All right. Any other questions from the council? Yeah, Mayor, I, I would just like to say that I agree with staff on this particular uh, development. And uh, I've got to go along with them and, and uh, vote against this plan tonight. I think they're spot on with the way that we're headed out there in that area. And uh, Jay, want to do this, but I just can't support it tonight. Thank you, Mr. Dawson. Anyone else? Okay. Lindsay, the roll call. Adams. No. Oglins. No, ma'am. Dawson. No, ma'am. Griswold. No, ma'am. Foreman. No, ma'am. Parsons. No. Witten? No. Anders? No. So, me and when we get to item 10A5, because this was not adopted by you, that will be removed from the agenda, and I'll remind you at that time, because you can't consider it if, if it's not out of the plan development district. So, item 9C6 is a request from the Industrial Development Board to, of the City of Auburn to rezone approximately 13.14 acres of property located at 2225 Lee Road 10, also known as Beehive Road, from rural to industrial. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval at its April 13th meeting. Unanimous consent is necessary and a public hearing is required. I'll leave this ordinance and ask unanimous consent. Second. I have a motion to second. Does anyone on the council have a problem moving forward with a vote on this this evening? Seeing here and none, we'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the council, please come forward and give us your name and address for the record. And you have five minutes. <clears throat> Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. Any comments or questions from the council? Okay, Lindsay with the roll call. Oblentz? Yes. Dawson? Yes, ma'am. Griswold? Yes, ma'am. Foreman? Yes, ma'am. Parsons? Yes. Witten? Yes. Adams? Yes. Anders? Yes. Item 9D1 is a request by the City of Auburn for approval of amendments to various sections and tables of the City of Auburn Zoning Ordinance to create the Interstate Commercial Zoning District. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval at its April 13th meeting. Unanimous consent is necessary and a public hearing is required. A quick sidebar, this is relative to an item you considered in January in this vicinity. I'll introduce the ordinance and ask for unanimous consent. Second. Have a motion to second. Does anyone on the council have a problem moving forward with the vote on this this evening? Okay. This time we'll open the public here. If you'd like to address the council, please come forward and give us your name and address for the record. And you have five minutes. Okay. We'll close the public here. Any comments or questions from the council? Based off of the permitted uses table, it, um, <coughs> basically it, everything would be conditional that would come before us, or is there anything that's permitted? No, lots of things are permitted. Uh, okay. Maybe I'm reading this table wrong. Oh, I'm, it's because it says yeah. holding district okay. above it, and that would confuse you. Okay. And, and it's not. This is actually the table, um, and I totally understand that, uh, why that would confuse you. But the, the table that's in here um, in your packets is accurate to this. Lot, lots of permitted uses. Okay, I see it now. Thank you. Any comments, questions? Is this just for exit 50? 
I know at, at the moment, yes, okay. sir. And so if you recall, there are three corners of this interchange that are not in the city limits. Bucky's is, and the rest of it is not. Uh, the parcel in question on the next thing, if, if you adopt this and create this zone, uh, we'll be asking to rezone a parcel at the corner of Corporate Parkway and Cox Road that you dealt with in the December, January timeframe where we figured out a way to work with the property owner to allow them to proceed, but we told you we would move forward creating this zone. And so this allows, as property does come in on the other corners of the interchange, to be converted to this zoning. We made an attempt years ago, and we had some longstanding property owners um, in the Exit 51 area that did not want, want to proceed with the zoning, so we never created the zone. Will the zone be applied to any other intersections down the road? Um, how, how we crafted this, obviously exit 50 is going to be kind of the first area that we take this. Um, you know, I think we designed this in such a way that, you know, if there is interest in moving it on up to some of the other interchanges, um, it's certainly set up to possibly do so. Um, we don't have any necessarily immediate plans at this point, but this zone and some of the allowable uses and some of the conditional uses are certainly geared more towards and more appropriate for some of these areas around the <coughs> exits as opposed to, you know, a... CDD zoning um, or, or something like that, that, you know, you've got to go through and get all these conditional uses to get a drive through restaurant or a hotel or something like that. That is what we want to see and what we want to encourage at a number of these interchanges. So I expect um, even at the exit 57 interchange, all that property is either developed and what's not developed is in a planned development district, which causes aspects of um, the Cope property, Champions Boulevard, that's in a planned development district already. So that's what reason why it's not, not applicable there. But um, there are <clears throat> parcels, the former raceway on South College, right, the interchange, even though that's likely South College corridor di district, would be slated, but it's not in the city limits. Uh, you know, newsflash to a lot of people, a good bit of South College is not in the city limits. Um, there's pockets here and there, and that's one of them. So if that parcel were to come in, the owners have the opportunity, and we would likely recommend that they avail themselves of this particular zoning. Yes, sir, Mr. Griswold. Um, so only property owners can request that they be rezoned into this district. Should we no, we, we, can, we can bring it forward, and it would be up to the council whether or not you would agree to do that. The city has the right to make map amendments and rezone property. And the, the parcel you were just talking about, even though it's in the, it's not in the city now. Right. If we annexed it, it would come in as rural, even though it's not rural right now. Correct. And then likely the staff recommendation would be for it to carry on to this, to this particular ICD. zoning. Okay. Yeah. And that would be the hope. And we're very hopeful um, with the Bucky's development that the three other corners, you know, yes, there is some development here, there on those parcels, but some of it highest and best use will change over time as this interchange continues to develop. I might add that I've had a number of conversations with surrounding property owners as well, kind of in this exit 50 area, some who are in and some who are outside of the city currently. And, you know, I think that they see this as a, a positive thing when they're looking to develop or sell their property. They don't have to necessarily go through that conditional use process if they've already got this set up with some of these uses that are a great fit for that area. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Okay, Lindsay, the roll call. Dawson? Yes, ma'am. Griswold? Yes, ma'am. Mormon? Yes, ma'am. Parsons? Yes. Witten? Yes. Adams? Yes. Koblenz? Yes, ma'am. Anders? Yes. Item 92 is a request by the City of Auburn to rezone property along Cox Road Exit 50 from Comprehensive Development District to Interstate Commercial District. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval at its April 13th meeting. Unanimous consent is necessary and a public hearing is required. I'll introduce the ordinance and ask for unanimous consent. Second. I have a motion to second. Does anyone on the council have a problem moving forward vote on this this evening? Seeing and hearing none, we'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the council, please come forward and give us your name and address for the record, and you have five minutes. Seeing no one, we will close the public hearing. Any comments or questions from council? I'd just like to say I appreciate the staff's work on this uh, deal here, and I appreciate the investment from the citizens in this and we were able to I think this is a time when local government worked like it should we work with the person trying to uh, get into the city limits and, and develop down there in that area and I think it went really well and I appreciate all the hard work thank you certainly agree with you all right anyone else okay Lindsay roll call Griswold yes ma'am 
Foreman? Yes, ma'am. Parsons? Yes. Bitten? Yes. Adams? Yes. Oblentz? Yes, ma'am. Dawson? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Resolutions. Item 10A1 is a request from Foresight Group on behalf of LAME LLC for conditional use approval of a performance residential component, which is a 29-unit multi-unit development. But it is, when I say performance component, the only thing that you're voting on this evening would be the performance residential piece. The rest is, is currently permitted by the base zoning district. So it's a it's a performance residential component of a mixed use development to include residential and office for property located at 1027 East Glen Avenue in the corridor redevelopment East zoning district. The previously approved conditional use for this project was granted in August, 2021 and has since expired. Nothing has really changed about this project in terms of its, its basic design. The planning commission unanimously recommended approval. It's May 11th meeting. A public hearing is required. Move approval. approval. Right, we have a motion and a second. This time we'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the council, please come forward and give us your name and address for the record. And you have five minutes. Okay. See no one. We'll close the public hearing. Any comments or questions from the council. It's important. I want to emphasize again. This is this was approved in August of 21. Nothing has changed, but their approval has expired. So they're asking us to re up it. Correct. And there has been a good bit of collaboration with staff on the design of this all along. And so, yeah, I think a lot of things got cut up, caught up in COVID approvals. You have another item where their approval expired as well. Uh, not to second guess the last council, but um, looking through this, they, they have gone above and beyond everything that I have looked at. Parking, density, footprint, open space, and um, if the older council approved it I, it's good enough for me <laughs> previous not older yeah, for who you call it older. <laughs> talk about chief dawson that way you know, smart than i thought you were know, you know, you follow my lead more often and we'll work things out better <laughs> all right any other comments okay we have a motion a second all in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed motion carries <clears throat> Item 10A2 is a request from Mall Boulevard Partners, LLC, for conditional use approval of a commercial support use warehouse for property located at 1926 Mall Boulevard in the Comprehensive Development District Zoning District. The previously approved conditional use for this project was granted in 2019, but has since expired. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval at its May 11th meeting. A public hearing is required. Move for approval. Second. A motion a second. This time we'll open the public here. If you'd like to address the council, please come forward and give us your name and address for the record. And you have five minutes to speak. See no one. We'll close the public here. Any comments or questions? All, right. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 10A3 is a request from the Foresight Group on behalf of Lee County Opportunity Zone Fund 1 LLC for conditional use approval of a road service use of drive through for a coffee shop on property located at 1945 East Glen Avenue in the Comprehensive Development District Zoning District. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval at its May 11th meeting. A public hearing is required. Move for approval. Second. Motion is second. This time we'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the council, please come forward and give us your name and address for the record, and you have five minutes to speak to the council. So you know when we'll close the public hearing. Any comments or questions? The dice? Yes, Just sir. One, one quick one on page 3-5. It, it uh, gives a, a, a footprint, a floor area ratio of 1.96. Is that a typo? Is it 19.6 or...? Hold on, Mr. Howard is looking that up. Yes, I see where you're referring to. I believe that it. That's a very. I would, I would need to go back and look at the square footage, but it's huh? an, actually that is the correct. That it's is an correct. extremely small building. Okay. Um, yeah, it's only yeah. eight eight hundred square feet. It's okay. drive through only, um, mm -hmm. and most of what you see on the site plan um, is kind of that drive through stacking and just a handful of parking spaces. Very abnormal, though. Yes. Yeah. It's a very abnormal lot. There's not many uses for that. So, no, more fortunate there is a use for that yes. lot. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's at a traffic signal, correct? Bonus, yes. Okay, yes. yeah. Anyone else? Okay, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item 10A5 has been removed from the agenda based on a previous action. 
Um, sorry, 10A4, I need to get to that first. 10A4 is a request from the Industrial Development Board of the City of Auburn for conditional use approval of an industrial use and manufacturing facility on property located at 2535 West Tech Lane in the Industrial Zoning District. This project is known as Shenhua Phase 5. The Planning Commission unanimously recommended approval at its May 11th meeting. A public hearing is required. Move for approval. Second. Second. Motion is second. At this time, we'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the City Council. Please come forward and give us your name and address for the record. Seeing no one, we'll close the public hearing. Any comments or questions from the council? I would just like to say I met the CEO at the industry event that the chamber held, and um, they're very excited to be a part of this community, and it's just really nice. Um, thank you to the chamber for setting that up and the IDB for um, hosting. Um, it was a great event, and it's just a great opportunity because we don't normally get the opportunity to meet um, the leadership of a lot of these industries. And so it was just a nice event, very um, um, nice to meet um, the CEO and, and know that they have um, very positive things to say about the city. Certainly thank our <coughs> industrial development team for what they're doing here. I mean, this is a company, this is their fifth phase and what a substantial addition that they are making. and. We're just grateful. They could they could have chosen to do this in another community, but they're hunkering down right here with us in Auburn, and we're grateful for that. Thank them for their investment and their employing our citizens. All right, anyone else? Okay, we have motion second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Now item 10A5 has been removed from the agenda. Sorry about that. Item 10B authorizes an addendum <clears throat> to the city manager's contract. Move for approval. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. This time we'll open the public hearing. If you'd like to address the city council, please come forward and give us your there name and address. There's no not a public hearing. Ten, ten B. Ten B. Excuse me. I'm a little confused. All right. So we have a motion to second on this. I'd like to start off by making a few comments. Um, the city council has spent some time with the city manager recently. This is the first time that we have done this since she was officially hired. Um, and started in February of 2021. Um, each council member was able to spend a good amount of time with the city manager and discuss things that were important, things that, um, that they see as part of Auburn's future, and to hear from the city manager about her goals and what she sees are things that are important for Auburn's future. Um, I get to have the um, opportunity every day to be across the hall from the city manager and I see the kind of work and investment and commitment and dedication she makes to all of our city. We're not a small town anymore. We're a city of over 80,000 citizens. We have a budget that she has to manage that hovers around $200 million. There are employees this summer that will take us up to 900 employees working for the city of Auburn. It's a big job and we are a big town and we're growing. I'm proud that over the last two years that she has done things with transparency and communication that I believe has made Auburn better by adding and encouraging social media with our public safety, our library, and our parks and rec, their own social media, that they, their own communication that they are managing. She has managed our budget well, and we have seen revenues grow the last two years, but when you think about those enterprise funds and our general fund and what she has the responsibility for, it's really incredible what she's done planning our budget, at which she did an excellent job. 20 expansions. <clears throat> Today we just approved a, an expansion with Shenhua. There's been 20 different expansions over the last two years. Three new companies, over $580 million of capital investment and 800 jobs have been created under her leadership here in the city. And think about the commercial. We had a resident here earlier talk about Bucky's and add downtown Publix and a Target and the new Auburn Bank building and downtown hotels and the home goods and the redo of Opelika Road. Even though it was a long, arduous process, it got done and Opelika Road is a lot better. The CIP is ongoing right now. Some great projects. We're excited about the continuation and the finish out of the soccer complex and the indoor facility. Fire Station 6 is open now and serving our residents in North Auburn. We're excited about the potentiality and the getting started with the Public Safety Training Center to allow those professionals to get trained and continue to be um, educated uh, right here and where they do not have to travel. Soon we'll be opening Will Beekner Parkway, a very strategic road for our community that is named after a hero who lost his life protecting us. 
and we're about to get started or have started the Lake Wilmore Community Center and the Martin Luther King streetscape, which will take a gateway road into our community and make it beautiful. And then really a generational project with the Town Creek Inclusive Park. All of these things have either been started or built under her leadership. She'll be the first to tell you that she hasn't done all this on her own. She's got an outstanding staff that she empowers and that work hard for her. And they have staff that work hard for them. But at the end of the day, the buck stops at her desk. She's done an outstanding job. Her, her present salary with the city hired her to work for was $215,000. And I have recommended to the city council and I will ask them to pass tonight a raise for her to make $250,000. She has earned every bit of it. We did not give her a raise last year. We did not consider her performance. And we are doing this based on 27 months of work, of proven effort, and proven leadership for our community. Auburn's changing. We're adding seven people a day is what we would say um, to you. There's more things coming down the pike and it takes determined leadership to get Auburn in the right direction and keep us moving in a pathway forward. And I'm confident that Megan Crouch is the person to do that. Any other comments from the council? Yeah. Mr. Mayor. Sure. <clears throat> uh, it's kind of a, an awkward thing because a yes vote indicates that uh, we agree with the mayor's terms for the contract modification. Um, for reasons that I've conveyed to both the mayor and to the city manager, I do not agree with the terms of the amendment. So a, uh, a yes vote indicates I would agree but a no vote indicates I don't have confidence in the city manager and that it also is not, not true. I do have the utmost confidence in our city manager and I think Megan has done a wonderful job. So um, in accordance with Robert's rules, uh, if you can't agree with either side, you're allowed to abstain and that is my intent for this vote. Thank you, Mr. Griswold, and I appreciate your honesty and forthrightness. Anyone else? Yes, Mr. Mayor, I Please, appreciate your leadership. Megan, it's been a pleasure working with you. Um, I've always found you to be uh, just on our personal, on our inter interactions uh, as council member to a city manager, you've always been a uh, really efficient, professional, uh, prompt, um, thorough uh, with all that you've de dealt with me because uh, I've got a ton of questions still being relatively green to this gig and uh, I am an enthusiastic supporter of your leadership and uh, I'll be enthusiastically supporting this proposal. Thank you, Mr. Parsons. Uh, I'll echo that. I'm, I'm even greener uh, than you, <laughs> Bob. And, uh, Megan has done a, a, a wonderful job in the time that I've uh, been here and we're very appreciative. And to have somebody with a, a longstanding tenure you've had with our city, I think brings a very unique perspective. And I think we're very, very fortunate to have that background that you provide and in, uh, in, in service to our city. So thank you for all you did. I will second what uh, Max said, what Ron said, what, what Bob said. Uh, in my short time here, your, your level of professionalism has, has, has exceeded uh, my expectations. Um, I think that this is a, uh, this is a, a very fair decision. Uh, Ryan indicated that the city of Auburn is is growing. When you look at uh, other cities of, of a similar size, with a similar budget, with a similar staff, um, uh, this is definitely not out of line uh, for them. And I, I, I'd be willing to put our city manager um, uh, up against any of any of those other cities in our state. So uh, I, I will be supporting this. Yes, sir. I'd like to point out that um, Megan was the assistant city manager, and she has no assistant. Um, so I'll let that speak for itself. <laughs> and also, back when the three new guys were not even um, hadn't even been elected yet, um, Megan was answering our questions back then. And I want to thank you for that. Anyone else? Um, I would like to say thank you for your leadership. I would also say um, thank you for um, keeping the city of Auburn on a trajectory that is um, parallel to our growth and our quality of life. And, um, you know, when we evaluate you and your um, leadership and what you have done, the budget to me is kind of the, 
the compass for all things, and I think that you have done an outstanding job with your leadership team and your staff and providing um, really great quality of life for this community and sticking to the budget and providing um, great insight and intel to us as a council and making decisions because that, after all that is what we are here to do and that is to approve um, the business of the city and you go forth and you do great things with that information and those tasks and I, I want to say thank you for that and I also want to say that I think it's um, very much in line with what your counterparts in other parts of the state are making and I think this is shoring up your salary to be um, more in line with what cities of our size and even many cities the, who are smaller than us and so I think it's the right thing to do to um, get you to where you are um, more balanced in your compensation to other cities in the state of Alabama. Thank you Ms. Wood. Mayor, if I may, uh, I'd like to say how much I appreciate the job you do, Megan. Uh, I'm working on my 36 years serving the city of Auburn. So I've been there and done that pretty much, and I've seen what it, what can happen to the city and, and the city employees in particular. <coughs> when you have a city manager, maybe you're not quite on top of their game. You're on, certainly on top of your game. I don't agree with everything you do, but then it would be a problem if you did, if I did agree with everything you do. <laughs> but uh, you work hard, you care about your folks, and uh, – those two things there get you a long ways. And I guess it all comes down, I hate, probably hate to admit it, but it comes down to finance and how the city runs well. You keep a tight rein on the money, and uh, I appreciate that. Uh, uh, and again, I think you know me well enough. I watched you mature and grow up through the, the, the process here in the city of Auburn. Uh, I know when you first, I think you start off in, with planning and you have unique, you're uniquely qualified to be in the position you're in, and we certainly would never want to lose you. So we hope you'll be with us a long time to come, and uh, I'm just glad that uh, to have you as our city manager. And uh, if you don't know, if you run into a problem, don't know what to do. Just call me and ask me. I'll be glad to <laughs> answer your questions. I'm just kidding on that, but uh, I do appreciate your work and uh, I appreciate Kelly's comments. I, I admire him for what he said and. Uh, I think it was very well put, Kelly, and it showed a lot about yourself. All right. I think everybody had something to say there, so we do have a motion and a second. So all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? One abstention. All right. The Mayor, if I may, thank you. Um, it's an honor and a privilege to serve the citizens of Auburn to work with the city council, and, and it's true what you said about the staff. I'm only as good as the great people that work at the city of Auburn, and all 900 of them are important to me. Um, and everything that they do and I wake up every day worried about them and not about them doing their job just to protect them and to give them the resources they need to serve the citizens so we're fortunate in Auburn this is a great community and I'm very fortunate to be at the helm of this community so thank you very much moving on item 10 C authorizes the vacation of the northern portion of the unused alley located between 547 and 551 Harper Avenue and further authorizes the mayor and city manager to execute a quit claim deed relinquishing the property to NEOH Holdings LLC and north of Harper LLC for, for the boulevard development a public hearing is required move for approval second, second. I have a motion to second this time we will open the public here if you'd like to address the city council please come forward and give us your name and address for the record see no one we'll close the public hearing any comments or questions from the council I do please if I may I went out there and looked at this um, the portion that is under consideration is already built upon there's a retaining wall and possibly even encroachment by by a dwelling uh, and that's a little presumptive, I think. It uh, is an excellent question, Councilman Mormon. And what happened is, is there's an indemnity and hold harmless agreement um, that allowed them because this portion of the alley was unused to proceed. Um, should the council, and I very much respect what you're saying about it being presumptuous, should the council not approve this vacation tonight, all of those improvements have to be removed, but they did have a legal document permission to do the work that they have done. Um, Mr. Nelson can bring up a map. It's the very last item, Greg, um, that will show you what, what Councilman Mormon is referring to. He's able to. 
So the, the blue colored area is, is the alley that is being requested vacation. And if you look at the southern side or the lower side, um, there's a touch of a building that would go into it. The rest of it is parking. Further south, the alley cannot be abandoned. The adjoining property owner was not interested in seeing that happen. Um, and it is not my preference that, that we do projects um, in this manner with an indemnity and hold harmless. Um, but nonetheless, when this alley is wholly encompassed by they are the property owner on either side of the alley. The reason that we allowed that to happen, um, always with the caveat that if the council doesn't approve this, you're at your own risk, you know, and we have no, um, the city has no risk. That is the only reason it was allowed to go on this way. Um, there is a lot of time and effort that goes into these abandonment documents, but staff was aware from the start when they started this phase of the project that they would be requesting that. Anybody else? So understand the question and understand why you're you're asking that. So the process just got ahead of itself. No, they were given permission by the staff to do so. Is that a regular occurrence? No, it is not a regular occurrence, and as a matter of fact, it won't be happening moving forward unless I have certain assurances. So, and I'll let you know when when we do. So, um, Councilman Mormon rightfully pointed out that construction was underway on this, and it's not our intent to be presumptuous with the council that uh, that you would agree to anything. The reason that staff recommended that we do this is because the developers in question wholly surround it. So the alley wasn't wasn't for the use of anyone else. It was only for this development, and the city has no reason to want to own or maintain it. So that is why. We agreed to allow this, but again, all documents, if you don't approve it, tell them they'll have to take the improvements out and return it to its original state. Just one more question, if Sir. I may. It, it appears that the retaining wall goes all the way down to Harper. There would be a retaining wall. If you're looking further south and see dashed lines, it would be on their property. <clears throat> it would not be on the alley property. Okay. Does that make sense to you? Well, when you're looking, if sure. you go down I, mean, that, the page, I guess that was my question. Is it on, on the property that would be west, on the west side? Yeah, it would be on their property on the west, okay. the, the developer's property, and certainly not the alley. The adjoining property owner to the south was very clear that they were not interested in seeing the, the alley abandoned, so therefore it is not abandoned there. The good news for them is with a building going there, I don't know, um, City Engineer Fraser is... Is, there, is that a driveway or is that just going to be blocked by the building? Can you? I don't know if anybody's going to be driving down the alleyway. Oh, no, it's not drivable. I was just going to add that um, in this area where they're showing the construction that you've noticed, um, there was a house there at one point. While they had ability to take access to the alley I don't think that was their access ever so I don't think that access that alley has ever been developed for any kind of access and that access is no longer needed Thank you. <coughs> All right. any other questions comments okay I have a motion and a second all in favor please say aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed and the motion carries <clears throat> Those are all the items of business we have for you this evening. This time, Citizens Open Forum, this is your opportunity to speak to the council about anything that might be on your mind. We ask that you please address your comments to the council, and uh, you have three minutes to speak. I never box, <clears throat> boxed or anything, but I felt like I was getting punch drunk with the PDD and the CDD. So. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'm Robert Wilkins, 261 Denson Drive, Auburn, Alabama. Uh, good evening, uh, Mayor, Council. Um, <clears throat> I want to talk about freedom of choice. Um, will this uh, Auburn City Council give its citizens back their freedom of choice, property rights, and constitutional rights by allowing them to resolve their uh, own issues and personal problems or will it continue on the same path as past Auburn City Councils? <clears throat> First, Auburn Council in 1999 passed the, uh, a very discriminatory family definition ordinance against Auburn citizens, future and present Auburn alumnus, 
and others from purchasing homes by restricting who stays in their home in certain zones. Second, 32 years later, the Auburn City Council expanded their 1999 restriction by passing the ordinance 3288 in 2021, not allowing 11, <clears throat> 121 families to have guests in their home uh, and providing benefits to those families and providing a needed uh, to visit alumni and other, especially during the extreme uh, demand periods such as AU footballs and graduation. Third, this is going to be kind of unusual, but now there's another issue on the horizon. Um, Mamun. I know none of you, anybody know what a Mamun is? Okay, uh, what a Mamun is, is uh, it is a sharing living arrangement, uh, usually involving single mothers, where they pool their time, effort, and possible money to assist in the ma maintenance of their household and raising of children. In the United States, 80% of single parents are mothers comprising of over 8 million people. But the city of Auburn tells single mothers they can only live in certain areas of Auburn if they have a mom immune situation. These single moms will be treated as just as if I've been and others living in, uh, limiting our rights. So if two single uh, mother families join their resources and live in the same house in order to be uh, in the best community to raise and educate their kids, the city of Auburn will say, no way. Do you as a council now understand how building on the council of 1999, the council of 2021, and possibly 22, 23, or 20, 2024, that poor decisions will just get more complicated? Freedom of choice sometimes <coughs> is dead in Auburn. Thank you. Who'll be next? You will. Okay. We'll close the citizens open forum. Anything else from the council? Move to adjourn. Mr. Mayor, I have a question. Please. Or just a comment. Um, i just like to point out, you know, we've been criticized quite a bit up here about rights and this and that. Um, according to state law, we have no requirement whatsoever to have citizens come up and address the city council unless it's for a public hearing. Uh, the prior council and this council took it upon themselves to provide two opportunities throughout our agenda for the public to come up and address things. So if, if anything, when people criticize us for denying or impeding their Amendment 1 uh, First Amendment rights, we have gone the, other op we've gone the opposite direction. We have provided two opportunities, whereas by law we don't have to provide any. So I'd just like to say that you know, we, we hear people coming up Week in, week out, and that's fine. They have their time. Uh, we're happy to provide you time at the for, at the podium to make your comments. But uh, please understand, this city council and the previous one have gone out of our way to allow public comment. Yeah. Thank you. Good point. All right. Anyone else? All right. So move to adjourn. I move. We're adjourned.